Hello there, friend. This is Eric J. Uh, this is now part two of the video series about why the concept of hate speech needs to be protected, basically because of the First Amendment. Now, once again, this is, this is part two. The original concept for part one will be put up in a link that will be up here that you can go and take a look at. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this series. Also, if you happen to enjoy podcasts, you can go ahead and take a look at this article on the link below or really at any podcast you like. If you, want, if you like driving or running or really anything you like doing or whenever you're trying to listen to a podcast, go ahead and uh, look for this uh, title to the podcast and enjoy. We see this now with how institutions of supposedly higher learning so colleges and universities, these institutions in which you are expected to be challenged, to expand your knowledge and understanding, to expand your boundaries of understanding, regardless of personal opinion, are actively suppressing parts of our literary lexicon because of sensitive material and offensive language. They've even put out lists of banned books because of it. Banned books? Really? We're talking about adults here, banned books. A Virginia school district is facing backlash after pulling two American classics from its bookshelves. To Kill a Mockingbird and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn are both under review after a parent filed a complaint over the use of a racial slur. Brian Hill of our Virginia affiliate WTKR reports. After decades in the classroom, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and To Kill a Mockingbird are banned from Accomack County Public Schools. Last month, a parent expressed concerns over the book's use of the N-word. But there is so much racial uh, slurs in there and offensive wording that you can't get past that. And right now, we are a nation divided as it is. She filed a request to have the district find alternatives, forcing them to temporarily suspend use of the two novels. A review committee is expected to give the school superintendent a recommendation on whether to keep the books off of shelves. The N-word shouldn't even be in a book. Teresa Wilkins hopes the district bans them. It's in a book, and they'll feel that they are uh, able to say that to anybody. But some people disagree, saying even though the books have racial slurs, the quality of the content and what the message is behind the books is reason enough for students to read them. By removing it, what is it going to fix? I think to explain what has occurred would help more. Many others agree, saying censoring Huck Finn and To Kill a Mockingbird could set a dangerous precedent, possibly leading to other classic books being banned. I was a little disappointed that we would go that far. And it scares me, how much further are we gonna go? What else are we gonna ban? The superintendent says there is no set date for when the recommendation will be made. In Accomack County, Brian Hill, News 3. A committee consisting of a principal, librarian, teacher, and parents will review the complaint and then make a recommendation to the superintendent. Literature helps us navigate the world by shining a light on challenging and uncomfortable topics. Censorship leaves us in the dark. Shutting down discussion only ends up spreading fear, distrust, and ignorance. That's why it's more important than ever to keep the light on by allowing everyone to access materials from all viewpoints. Of the 483 books that were challenged or banned in 2018, these were the top 11 most challenged. Number 11, Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan, and number 10, This Day in June by Gail E. Pittman for including LGBTQIA content. Number 9, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi for profanity, sexual references, and its religious viewpoint. Number 8, The Skippy John Jones Series by Judy Shackner for depicting cultural stereotypes. Number seven, This One Summer by Mariko Tamaki and Jillian Tamaki for profanity, sexual references, and certain illustrations. Number six, 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher for addressing teen suicide. Number five, Drama by Raina Telgemeier for its LGBTQIA characters and themes. 
Number four, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. For profanity, drug use, sexual references, and because it was deemed anti-cop. Number three, The Captain Underpants series by Dave Pilkey for including a same-sex couple and it was perceived as encouraging disruptive behavior. Number two, A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo by Jill Twiss for LGBTQIA content and political and religious viewpoints. And the number one banned book for 2018, George by Alex Gino for including a transgender character. The best defense against censorship is knowledge and awareness. By learning to recognize censorship when you see it, you can help protect brave and uncompromising literature. To learn more, visit ala.org slash bbooks. Also, when you consider uh, organizations which are generally considered to be under the, under the heading of hate speech, such as Westboro Baptist Church, the Nation of Islam, and all white supremacist groups, and really any group that is popularly known as hateful, their speech is also viewed by their adherents not as hateful, but as acceptable, as logical and reasonable. Now, I don't happen to agree with that, but that is how they view it. Now, as I said, I don't agree with any of their rhetoric, but when you consider, if you consider them as your enemy, there's also a biblical passage of how to, of how any one of God's creations are supposed to be relating with your enemy. How to treat those who embody this kind of hateful rhetoric and logic. I'm going to quote it here for you. It is Matthew 5, 43 through 48. Love your enemies. Says, you have heard it said, said you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those that curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use and use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and he say he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Now, granted, we are not God; we are not as good as him but we are supposed to be emulating this example by using force meaning law to stifle your ideological enemy by effectively trying to erase them if you consider this you are also placing their ideologies in a position where people can become curious about those ideologies to ask people what is so dangerous about this rhetoric that you want to go out of your way to completely erase them from, uh, from public knowledge? Since you're eliminating that, you're trying to say, no, you can't say that kind of stuff. You're eliminating people's option to be able to listen to and discern that this is not good, I don't want to follow that. But yeah, just a reiteration, you're, allowing these pe you're basically allowing these groups to become martyrs. In effect, reiterating the question, what is so dangerous about the rhetoric that such and such a group was considered so dangerous that you wish to erase them from a public consciousness. Now, you may have your reasons, but that doesn't mean that you have the right to force them from having the option of listening to those same opinions to make their own determinations. The Bible has a better answer for how we should deal with this kind of rhetoric or, or ideologies that are so offensive to us personally, to you and me, that we want it gone. Now I'm going to quote here from the Bible, Proverb 26, 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. And in those circumstances that you find you cannot convince somebody to move away from their hateful rhetoric, then the Bible also, have an, also has an answer to that, which is not yelling in their face and try to, to shout them down or what have you. It is simply this, and I'll quote it for you. It is Matthew 10, 14. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake, the, uh, shake off the dust from your feet. Meaning simply leave. Calmly and peacefully. So, really shouting somebody down because you don't like what they have to say is counterproductive. You're going to put them on the, de on the defensive to dig in even further, as opposed to enabling them the chance to consider your perspective from a mature standpoint. The short of it is, 
that instead of trying to forcefully impose your opinion on others by enacting laws to suppress their opinion to promote your own, as has been shown historically, even in our laws and our war against communism by trying to forcefully suppress communistic ideologies, which all it really did was just force it underground to pop up later, which we see everywhere nowadays. Trying to use force, trying to use guns, trying to use bats, or knives or what have you, to try to force your opinion on somebody else to try and stop them from speaking, as has been proven in all of our wars, beans and bullets do nothing against words and ideology. It will simply force it down underground like I said with communism and it, it really doesn't help so long as even one soul exists to spread the message you don't like that message will spread regardless how long it takes and by trying to force it away you are driving the curiosity of others to unsatiable levels they have to know what was so important for you to go out of your way to force it away they're driving these insatiable, curious observers to the question of why. Meaning, why did such an idea, such an organization, or such and such an individual feel the absolute drive, the absolute need? Why did they feel so threatened by an idea that they would attempt to apply physical force to try to eliminate it? And that's a question that even people, those who are part of Antifa, have to uh, consider for themselves as to exactly what are the what is the end goal of what they're trying to do with their violence because they're not suppressing it all they're doing is just forcing it through different means and that's kind of reductive to their intent hence the inevitable sparks of the brush fire of your mind of an idea that would otherwise sputter out is being inconsequential into obscurity due to its own contradictory illogic so ultimately the best method of stifling an idea you don't happen to like is not through enacting laws to suppress hate speech, but by enabling the idea to be heard through proper guidance, through proper principled guidance, and by careful exposure in light of this guidance, so that when the offensive idea is known, it can be placed within its own proper context. Also consider that some offensive ideas must be placed within a certain historical context relevant to the area in which the relevant to the era in which the idea was known. Now you might disagree with this, but the best possible set of guiding principles from which to understand good and evil, to understand to frame the idea, is originating from within the Bible of you love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. And not just love being of good feelings but within the context of God's law, meaning the Ten Commandments, which defines good, the best possible type of ideology. That's the ultimate extension of this is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. But just realize that hate speech itself must, cannot and should not be stifled, not by law. People must be allowed to make the proper determination based off of their own experiences, what they know, uh, their own faith system, and be able to determine their own course of action after that. Trying to shout somebody down is counterproductive and all you're going to do is just force the message to go somewhere else where you cannot speak into it from a point of civil uh, logic and from uh, mutual love of the other person. God bless, and have a good evening. Also, for those fans of Ron Paul, go ahead and look below in the description box for a link to his homeschool curriculum. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you remember to like the video, subscribe, and comment.